All right, welcome back to another video, everybody. Today we are working on what Devin has been working on for the past couple of days, and it's the Titan II 7720 Combine. As you can see, the unloading augers are being changed in the tank. This is the new stuff. Look how thick that stuff is. Nice new auger. This is 92 pounds itself, plus the, the tube. And this has to go, there's a spline in here. It has to go all the way up in there and spline up with that. And then you have to hold it and put this even heavier piece at the bottom of here. Yeah, so that's the problem for today. We're gonna try to figure out how to do that. It is gonna be quite the struggle. It's pretty heavy and awkward and everything has to go out at an angle. But it has to also go, it has to be together like this to put it. We tried just putting the tube up because that's the lightest part and then tried fitting the auger. But it has to come at such a steep angle, it gets stuck. So that's why we have to put it all together. So we're gonna try to find a way to maybe get a pulley block up there and kind of winch it up a little bit, make it a little easier on us. I'll show you the old augers. I tell you, these things were due to be changed. Someone had welded on the welded the fighting on the side just to kind of hold it together. What really matters is the diameter, though, with the edge that wears, not so much the sides. Anyways, you can see they're fairly thick. I'm getting killed by a mosquito right now. Anyways, so these are the. These are sharp augers. We are still waiting on parts for that. We do have our smooth rotor, roller that we got made from a machine shop. Good quality. So yeah. And the old uh, unloading auger was just thrown straight in scrap because it was pretty dangerous, dangerously sharp. So you can just paper thin compared to the old one or compared to the new one. So this thing should, it should be able to empty the grain tank much faster and efficiently because now it was unloading, but a lot was getting past it and just kind of doing circles. So that kind of made everything take a lot longer. We also have to do some patch work. This was rotten out. Devin put a plate behind there. And there's still some tin metal that is pretty rusty. But yeah, for the most part. Yeah, we have to get that one out too. So there's a fair bit of work to do yet. But we've been getting rain every day or every second day about three weeks behind now with uh, the hay so that's why I went out took a vacation for a little bit went out east but uh, you can only do so much vacationing you gotta still come back and do something so we're just gonna try to fix all the crap that's broken and hopefully when that's done uh, we can start doing hay again because second cuts looking looking almost ready the alfalfa was flowering we're not even done our first cut we still got about 250 acres to go so yeah so we're just checking crops this morning. Last night there was a tornado back in our uh, in our area, so we just kind of check on everything, make sure all the buildings are standing. And there was some hail in Papnoville, but none of our farms are. Well, one of our farms is close to Papnoville, but now we're just at our Hardy Farm checking on the corn. And uh, now I think the corn's doing pretty good. Surprised. Green corn. These green corn. Sorry, we can't do that. Somebody missed. What's going on? This is lost potential. So yeah, we got uh, over our head, which is good. But no hail damage. So I guess we didn't get any hail here. Our barn's still standing, so we're good. Looks pretty good.
hard to start. So we're coming from a new uh, angle here. We're gonna turn the combine around so that we can get the loader on the side and uh, attach that block, pulley block, uh, to the forks. I'm gonna see if that works. Basically gonna move the combine farther away from the shop, but out in the open. Tractor's in place. We got our pulley block here, up in there. I'm gonna try to connect it to the very bottom of this auger so that we can get the spline in place. And I'm gonna get a wrap with a strap or something to hold the auger chain. This is where we're at. We've run out of room on the block. So now we gotta take the tension off and relocate it. So we're gonna use this ratchet strap to hold the weight while we uh, relocate the... Now I don't know where to connect this because if I connect it here, it's gonna slide off. Take a look. Give me a little bit. It's gonna unhook. It's gonna unhook if you go any lower. You trust the strap. And what about what about the auger though? Okay, so we're taking the chain off. Just kind of stuck there. Holding on. Should have worn my hard hat today. We're get, getting there now. Just trying to get the auger in place. Never mind getting the slot, the splines lined up. Okay, now I'll just wait. It has to go. What? It's hitting on here now it has to go down all right we've gotten a lot harder than i thought we would so we got the chain block with the chain to the bottom of the auger holding the auger to go in and we have that ratchet strap holding this uh the outside tube uh in place the biggest part was just getting it over up and over here but now we're just have to line it up into the spline. Like if you remember in the last video I showed you, there's a spline at the bottom. You can see a little bit there. And those have to line up perfectly. So that's gonna be tricky. We gotta come from the back now. So we got the uh, auger spout in, bolted, three spots. Now we just have to get the auger uh, lined up in the spline, I guess. Let me try not to get our strap in the bed. Yeah, it went, uh, actually went in pretty good. He managed to make a, open up the uh, top auger here, inspection hole here to uh, line up the splines. He says the auger in there is razor sharp though. So we have to drop this again to disconnect that auger if we want to ever change it. At least uh, we'll have to touch this again. Hopefully. 
Hopefully not. Maybe my kid will take it. Push it back again. How much? Keep going. Oh, I can only really. All right, so the spline is lined up. It's in. Perfect. Let me put on the bottom drive. I'll show you. Uh, the little hole up there. So over on top here, this is the access hatch, the auger. You can see the uh, unloading auger's fucked too. But in between here, you can see the. Uh... Oh, you can't quite see it. Basically, where the auger had to line up to the spline for the directional uh, drive. Anywho, it lined up, it worked. So yeah, this is how we did it. My idea. It worked too. Got it done before lunch. All right, bolting stuff together now. This is still suspended by the chain. I got the got the ratchet right here. Chickens are out. Yeah. Is that one the last? That one's after the plate. After the plate, so you gotta put that plate in. Okay, now we're This is where we're at. We got the floor jack underneath, putting this big direct gear direction piece in. It's really heavy, and you have to line up the splines again, but we managed to do that with some leverage. So now we're just bolting it in. I wish it, I wish it was as easy as it looks, but it wasn't. Heavy duty stuff. All right. So, we're still missing a couple bolts. We have to cut a couple off to get it out. They're so rusty. But. I was turning it earlier. It's a little hard to turn by hand. It it does turn. Yeah, it means I'm turning even the unloading auger, so everything runs pretty smooth. It looks pretty good. It was a real pain in the ass to get in because everything has to be not only strict you know, straight like this, but straight like that. And that's the problem we were having in this corner was, was always going down until I got the big pry bar and managed to get it right in there. And I had enough leverage just to prop up the back corner here and wheel it in and worked out all right. So now we just reassemble everything and uh, on to the next augers. I hope, uh, I hope the other ones go in. This Maybe we have to take this out again to put that one back in. Shoot. All right, next is the next auger. It goes right there. We ordered this one. It'll be two weeks before we get that. So we're gonna keep it in till then. Now we gotta fit a bearing onto the end of it, I believe. You gotta come out that way? What? You gotta come out this way?
don't know what happened here, but the new auger's got a little ding, ding in her. Somebody somewhere hit it. Anyways, we gotta put bearings on it now. We got the wrong size bearing, so we can't put in that auger like we wanted to. So now we're working on this. Thumbnail. There we go. Big sprocket. We need a new sprocket like that. So we have to take that off so that we can get to the bearing so we can take out that last auger. Uh, like I said, we didn't want to take out because we were going to wait. But we just called John Deere and they said they're going to be in pretty soon so we can take it out. So that's what we're doing right now. A little change of plans, but at least we can still keep going forward and do something while we wait. So now... They hardly ever work these things. So we've been trying to get this off for some time now. We heated it and heated it and heated it and we had the puller on it. We since chucked the puller. Now we're cutting the shaft of the auger on the other side. And we're gonna try, maybe we can get it out some other way. We wanna pull it out the other way instead of the right way. So Devin's in there. It's so that we can pull it out the other way, hopefully, but we'll see how that goes. We thought we could go this way with it once you unbolt everything, but I don't know if we can. So this cooled down now. Maybe we can pull on it a little bit more, but we'll see how that goes. So that's the auger we cut out. That's solid. Two inch shaft. So now we gotta get the bearing and the rest of the shaft out. So we're gonna unbolt it with this here impact wrench. Uh, unfortunately, we cooked the bearing. I don't want to know what that costs. All right, that's the hole, it's out. That's where the auger goes in. And this is the shaft we cut off. And we're gonna try to beat the shit out of it and get it out of there. I don't know about that. But I don't even think it would come out. Spray a snap ring in there. <laughs> I bet you there's something we missed. Well, we'll try to hit this off now. Now that we're on the other side of it, we can hit it. We can hit the shaft out now? No, I don't think so. So now we're trying to separate the two. Even with a cut, we can't get it off. But I need a uh, press. Press it out. without breaking the casting. Oh, 
I don't know how that's gonna work. Should put it in between two uh, sawhorses, and I don't think you can break that plate. Of course you can. This stuff here. Oh, here we go. The We've since uh, separated the two. Uh, you get the shaft just starting to move now on this side, so we managed to uh, cut in between the two pieces. It was like this. Devin got in there with the torches, and he didn't do uh, too much damage in the back. A little bit, but it's not too bad. We managed to read the number off the bearing so we can get a new one of those, but we still gotta get that shaft out of there, which is gonna prove to be pretty tricky because uh, the shafts are different diameters and we got all this slag on it now. So we might have to go press that out at the neighbors. As for this, I'll just keep hitting on it and it should come out. <laughs> 